Life could be a dream. Life could be a dream. Do 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 shaboom. Life could be a dream if I could take you up in paradise up above. If you would tell me I'm the only one that you love, life could be a dream. Sweetheart, hello, hello again. Shaboom and open with me again. Boom. Hello there, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is a week in my life as a writing student here in New York City. I'm attending writing school here, so I take classes in fiction writing and TV writing, and I'm also working on my little novel. It's my baby, it's my little child, and I thought it would be nice to share with you what a week in my life actually looks like, and bring you not just the big apple, but the whole damn orchard. I read Giovanni's Room recently, amazing book by the way, and James Baldwin talks about how New York feels like like potential. It's the potential of what could come and what could be and I definitely feel like I'm loving being in New York because it feels so inspiring. And you know what? I have red solo cups and Jolly Ranchers in my kitchen and I'm starting the day with a cold brew so I think I might be a New Yorker. Maybe. Potentially. Even though I still go the wrong way on the subway every single time. It's a work in progress, guys. I'm working on it. And this week, I'm bringing you along with me. Now, one thing I am very excited to tell you is that this video is brought to you by Valentino. Words I never thought I would say. I'm pinching myself so you don't have to. I am so stoked about this because for me, this whole channel is about storytelling and fashion is a form of storytelling. It's a way of expressing yourself. It's a way of telling yourself who you want to be. It's also a way of telling the world how you want to be perceived. And of course, Valentino is to fashion what a great novel is to literature. Like, look at this jacket. Are you kidding me? Anyway, what's super exciting is that Valentino are also championing storytelling in the literary world because they have been working on the world's first words-only campaign in the luxury industry, and that is called The Narratives. They do this incredible campaign, which I'm absolutely obsessed with, where they give authors from around the world the same brief, and then see what text each one comes up with following that brief. And this is what they created, and I want to show you it because they are stunning. I mean, this colour just screams Valentino, right? And inside we have these. These are the posters that were made from the writer's contributions. And I want to show you some of my favourites because they're gorgeous. So this year's theme was the word love. This one is from Leila Slimani and it says, We all die unknown, but if we have loved, if we have devoted our heart to another, even for a moment, our life has counted. It's so brief, but so effective and so powerful. There's contributions from Miyako Kawakami, Emily Ratajkowski, Andrew Sean Greer, Britt Bennett, Andre Asiman, Sarang Chung, so many incredible authors. It's just the coolest idea ever. And then I also love this one from Hanif Qureshi. It says this, I know love is dark work. You have to get your hands dirty. If you hold back, nothing interesting happens. At the same time, you have to find the right distance between people, too close and they overwhelm you, too far and they abandon you how to hold them in the right relation. It's just so cool. And they basically put these posters up in independent bookstores. Like, isn't this just the coolest campaign ever? And Valentino actually collaborated with Penguin to champion and share these three books before their publication. They released these in a special box. So you have The Crane Wife, Sea of Tranquility, and then also Night Crawling. I've been reading this this week and I'm absolutely head over heels in love with it. It's breaking my heart, but like, in a cool way, <laughs> you know? I am so obsessed with this project and I'm very excited because they're doing it again in 2023. And I can't wait to see which authors they work with and what those authors create. Thank you, Valentino, for working with me on this video, but also thank you for championing literature. It's so exciting to see. Today, I'm actually going to be working on some storytelling of my own, I guess, because I've got an all-day workshop specifically on dialogue. I really don't think that dialogue is my strong suit when it comes to my writing. It's the bit that I dread when I'm writing. Like, if I have a scene with heavy dialogue, I put it off for so long. And so I signed up to this workshop. It's like an all-day thing. So I get there at 10 and finish at 6 p.m. I think there's 10 of us and then a teacher and we're going to be working on some writing exercises and learning all about how to do effective dialogue, how to write great conversations, I guess. So I'm gonna head there and I'll take you along with me. Good 
Good morning. I will never get over that this is where I live. Yesterday's dialogue class was really fascinating. I feel like I picked up a lot actually. We had a lot of times. So we did a lot of very cool and interesting exercises. Like for example, writing a couple having a tense conversation whilst ordering pizza. It was that kind of thing. And it was fun just to get really creative. And I actually love that there's just no pressure. Like what you write doesn't have to be good because you're just workshopping it. Anyways, then my friends had invited me to go pumpkin carving. So I went naturally and bought my pumpkin and I turned up and it turns out it was actually kind of more like a pre-drinking, well, they call it pre-gaming. Pre-gaming, that's one of the bits of vocabulary <laughs> I've had to learn. Like what else? Um, it's not a car boot, it's a trunk. It's not a dressing gown, it's a bathrobe. It's not a parcel, it's a package. So many things, more will come to me. But um, turns out <laughs> pumpkin carving meant going on a night out. So that was like an impromptu. I did not realize that was the plan, but I went anyway and I had a great time. And now to nurse my hangover, I am gonna go book shopping. There's a place I've been wanting to go to. It's in the financial district, Fidei. It's called McNally Jackson. It's meant to be a really beautiful bookstore. And it's one of the independent bookstores that Valentino works with. So I thought I will take you along with me. Let's go get some fresh air and it's gonna be nice. That is where I'm heading. All the way over there. Um, but it is another gorgeous day here in New York City. Another day, another incredible Valentino jacket. <sighs> bury me in this, like literally when I die, bury me in this. I wanna look cool in the afterlife, what can I say? Anyways, I just headed downtown with some friends. We went down the West Side Highway, I think it's called. It was very nice, very sunny, very autumnal. Good vibes. Now tomorrow is actually Halloween. So I'm not Jack right now, I'm Jack O'Lantern. <laughs> I'm trying. And I just got home to receive a very exciting letter. So let's have a little look. Oh my god! Book Club Bellatrist and Mason Valentino, in collaboration with publishing house Tor Nightfire, are thrilled to present you with an exclusive box containing three advanced readers copies of the most terrifying horror novels of 2023. Happy reading, Valentino. And this is what we've got. I'm so excited by this. So, oh my goodness. How cool is that? Oh, oh it's a draw. A drawable. So inside each of these drawers is a spooky book that is coming out next year. And Valentino have sent these to me just in time for Halloween. So we have Sister Maiden Monster. Then in this one we have Pinata. Interesting. And then last but not least, The Spite House. How cool is that? And these are all published by Tor Nightfire. And look how stunning the box is. You know what? Bury me in the jacket and a life-size box of this. Like, put me in one of the drawers and then I can die happy. That would be lovely. Thank you, Valentino. How cool. Okay, drop everything because I have to tell you how freaking good this book was. Oh my God. I think this is the saddest thing I've read since A Little Life. It was so heartbreaking, heart-wrenching. And as you know, when something hurts my feelings, when it breaks my heart, I'm like, I highly recommend this book now. This is by Leila Motley. It's written by a poet and you can tell because every single line reads like poetry. It's so lyrical, but also it stabs you in the chest and then it just keeps twisting with every new plot twist. So many great lines. I was absolutely just in awe of the writing. It's about a woman who will do anything for her family. She's got a heart of absolute gold. It's one of those characters who I'm gonna miss, like now that I've put down the book, I'm gonna miss that character. And I think that's a real sign of a great book. Anyway, she ends up kind of escorting on the streets in Oakland, that's where the book is set. And she gets caught up in a kind of police scandal. And it's all about how the system fails people, about police brutality. It's about poverty, it's about love, it's about loss, it's about family. Don't crawl, run to the bookstore. Trust me, this is so great. One of my new favorite books of the year and also one of my favorite books I've read in a while. I am a big, big, big fan of this. If this did a stadium tour, I'd sell out every venue. Just me. I would buy all the tickets so that I could just 
cheer for this book. And this was part of the Penguin and Valentino collaboration. So cool. Anyways, I was sitting in bed reading this book. I'd like taken my contact lenses out. I was done for the evening, right? But now I'm fully dressed again because my friend messaged me asking if I would like to go and see an off-Broadway show. And I was like, hell yeah. Um, it's called Titanic. And it is the story of the Titanic, but told from the perspective of Celine Dion. Don't ask questions. I'm not asking questions. I'm just going with it. <laughs> and I'm so intrigued to see the madness that that is going to create. It's in quite a small venue um, called Asylum. And apparently they're moving it to a bigger venue because it's been so popular. But my friend was like, we have to go and see it while it's still in its like original venue um, at this place. He managed to get last minute cheap tickets. So we're gonna go and I think it's gonna be really fun. What a fun way to spend a Sunday evening, right? Today's been a good day. Today's been a success. Hello, New York. This is what I'm currently reading. It is basically a collection of essays, kind of a memoir, but told through essays. And I've never read anything like it because it really draws on like other pop culture references. So each essay will be based around like a film or a book, like Rebecca, for example. And it's a mixed bag. Some of the essays I'm enjoying, some not so much. Um, I think it really helps if you've engaged with the other piece of art that she's talking about because they really serve as like a reference point for what she's discussing. But it's okay, there's some interesting insights, some great lines, and I'm glad to have read it. Halloween decorations are out in full force. And you know what's so fun is that the first time I came to New York was for my 18th birthday and it was around Halloween and I walked around the area that I now live in and I was like seeing all the Halloween decorations, seeing all the Halloween costumes as all the kids were like trick or treating. And I remember being like, oh, I want to live here so bad. And now I do. Life moves pretty quick, huh? The Celine Dion musical was just as bonkers and ridiculous as you would hope for in your wildest dreams. I had the best time, honestly. It was so fun. And sometimes those like last minute spontaneous plans are the best ones, right? And my whole, I feel like my life here generally is very <laughs> spontaneous and last minute. I'm just going with the flow, you know, I think that's the best way to be. Today's Halloween. The scariest thing for me today is my deadlines. I have so many deadlines for my writing school. I basically, so tomorrow I have two classes. So in the morning from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. I have a fiction writing class and then from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. is TV writing. I have never done TV writing before so this is a whole new world for me and basically what we have to work on is like a spec script so taking a pre-existing TV show and writing what would be essentially the next episode of the show. I chose Derry Girls because Derry Girls is my favorite show. I love it so much. And I know that technically it did end with series three this year, but I'm writing like essentially what would be season one of episode four. It's just like a class project, you know? So we basically present twice over the course of the course. Great words there, Jack, nicely done. So firstly, I have to present an outline of my episode. And then secondly, I have to present the episode, like the script for that episode. Now my first submission is this week. So I basically have to submit my outline. And then next week I, in the class, have to go into the booth. And in the booth, basically you have to sit there and everyone in the class will give you feedback. So they'll tell you what they liked, what they didn't like, and what they think you can improve on, but you're not allowed to speak. So if they have questions or anything, you're not allowed to address them until everyone has spoken. The idea being that in the real world of writing, once you put art out into the world, like you can't sit there with someone and explain the script to them or explain your novel or your short story or your poem like that person is going to consume your content without you to kind of hold their hand and guide them through it. I love the concept, hate the prospect of the fact that I have to sit there and do it. I'm so nervous. I mean everyone in the class is really really nice so it'll be fine but I am bricking it so all day today I basically need to do my homework for my two classes read um, other people's scripts so I can give them feedback tomorrow. And it's the same in my fiction writing class, like people will submit pieces of fiction. Um, so I have three like short stories that I need to read 
and write um, feedback on so that I can give them feedback tomorrow. And I'm gonna go to a New York public library. They're so good. I signed up literally last week and it's changed my life because do you know how much a nice latte costs here? It's insane. And I can't keep paying to go and sit in coffee shops and work for the day. So the New York public libraries are an absolute game changer because um, obviously they're free to join and you can just go and sit in the reading room and get your work done. And it, it's a really nice, atmosphere, like everyone else is working too. I'm really liking working from like the public library or from bookstores, because um, again, the vibes, immaculate. So that's how I'm going to spend my day. It's just gonna be a day of like sitting at my notebook, sitting with my laptop and writing and reading and reacting. <laughs> and then I'm gonna earn the Halloween party. Have I got a costume yet? No, <laughs> but I have a plan. I have an idea. I just need to execute it. In my head it works, but we'll see. And I'll show you that later on. This morning has been quite funny actually, because I opened my windows, my terrace door, just to get some fresh air in. And somewhere below me, below my apartment, like on my street, must be some sort of event space and they have an outdoor area. And someone is doing like a talk right now. And the audience are all standing in this venue's like back garden area, I suppose. And they're obviously reacting to what is happening on the stage. So they're like cheering and laughing, but I'm just going about my day like up here in the apartment. In fact, they're cheering right now. <laughs> it's really funny because I'm just like going about my daily business. Like I brush my teeth and then they like burst into applause. And I feel like I'm in an episode of Friends or something. Like I feel like there's a live studio audience watching me and like live reacting to what I'm doing. I feel like I'm gonna walk into something and everyone's gonna laugh at me or something. I don't know. They are not reacting to me. They are very much reacting to what is going on on that stage, but it's just really funny having like, I'll be making my breakfast and suddenly everyone starts cheering. So that's interesting. <laughs> Okay, time has passed, but Halloween costume secured. I appreciate it's very much just a mask. I also have fake blood and a little outfit. So I'm gonna pair this with like black tie, but with the bow tie undone, which mostly is just because tying a bow tie is the bane of my existence. It's the hardest thing. Even when you think you can do it, you, you still can't. But I thought it'd be pretty cool to do like an open, button, like bow tie thing, and maybe like some blood on my neck. The costume is actually inspired not by Ariana Grande, not by Bugs Bunny, but of course inspired by a book. The book is called Bunny. Um, it's by Mona Awad. And basically it's about this like murderous cult of girls. And they're like sickly sweet, dress in summer dresses, eat sugary food. They're all like trust fund babies. They're writing students and they call each other Bunny. But everything is not as it seems. And what they actually do is they have this like murderous cult. They have these secret meetings where they sacrifice bunnies, turn them into men, and then quite often like kill the men. And so I basically thought that I would be one of the like in-between stage bunny men things, <laughs> right? But I know full well everyone I see is gonna be like, oh, Ariana Grande, dangerous woman. And you know what? That's If that's what you wanna make of it, then that's fine. I actually don't know how much I'm gonna be able to film tonight because it's gonna be a little hectic. Um, I'm going to a friend's house and we're all getting ready together. And then they wanna take me to the Halloween parade, <laughs> which I think is like the ultimate tourist thing. But like, I'm a new New Yorker, I need to go see it. So there's this big parade and then we're going to a venue called Sleep No More. And Sleep No More is essentially like immersive theatre. But on Halloween, they close it down early and have a big party in the venue where the performance is. So it's like six floors of a hotel kind of thing. And you have free reign, you can walk around, there's an open bar, live performances, there's like cabaret, that kind of thing. So I think it's gonna be really, really cool. I don't think I can film very much, but I will try. So I guess here is my New York Halloween. Let's go. Oh, good morning. I'm currently regretting every drink I put into my body <laughs> last night. Whose idea was it to put Halloween the day before I have school? <laughs> I'm getting up. I'm getting up in like two more minutes. You know how some people say that their body is a temple? Mine is like a dilapidated garden shed <laughs> at best. And right now I need to fill that garden shed with coffee. I am currently living to regret <laughs> every droplet of alcohol. The Halloween is very fun. I'm very pleased that my fake blood is not still on my face. Cause I feel like that would be quite unfortunate for like a 10 a.m. class. Mama said there'll be days like this. There'll be days like this, Mama said. Mama 
Just wrapped class one of the day and I've come home to make some lunch. By the way, how cool is this Valentino jumper? I love it. And funnily enough, today's class was actually also on dialogue, um, which is what my workshop was on at the weekend. So hopefully by the end of this week, I can stop dreading dialogue. I don't know if I'll end up keeping this in the video, but I thought I could maybe read you something that I wrote in class. Bear in mind, I wrote this in five minutes, okay? So <laughs> if you think it's bad, Keep it to yourself. Basically, the assignment was to write a dialogue exchange between two people, starting with the line, did you ever think you'd see me like this? And that's the kind of thing that happens in my classes, like we'll be given a line and then we just go from there. So here is my dialogue, I guess. This is my little conversation I wrote. Did you ever think you'd see me like this? He said, scooping up the final goldfish with a forest green net. I suppose in another lifetime, I imagined it would have been you and I selecting which fish to bring home together, I said. I'd like to think I'd go for something a little more exotic than goldfish. You always did wish for more for yourself. And look where that got me. That seemed to take us both by surprise and plunged us into silence. He swallowed hard and grimaced slightly as he glanced down at his striped apron, self-deprecation masking his discomfort, tousled hair masking his eyes. Well, I'll be sure to look after my goldfish, I said, my gaze locked on the bag and not his face. Of course, he replies, I'm sure they're going to a loving home. I don't know, I thought it was fun to imagine like high school lovers who ended up not being together um, reuniting years later when they're in very different kind of like life situations. That's the thing I wrote. I hope you don't hate it. It was just a quick little thing, but um, yeah, I thought I would share what I wrote today. And now I have some time to read through some people's scripts to give feedback this evening, and then I'll head to my class later on. I went walking the other day everything was going fine. I met a little boy named Billy Joe, and then Oh my gosh, it's so dark, can you even see me? I just wrapped up my evening class. It was really fun actually. The problem with taking a TV writing class is that every TV show that we watch or gets referenced, I'm suddenly like, now I have to watch this. And I'm actually heading to a friend's birthday party. We're doing this like VR pizza night. He works in a theatre, so he's hired out the theatre and he's got two VR sets. So basically, you know how, I don't know if you've ever done VR, I did it for the first time like last week and it like messed with my brain so much. But when you do VR, you have a very small area that you can use and like I just kept walking into things. There's always the risk that you're gonna like smash the television or like break some furniture while you're in the VR world. And so he's rented this huge theater space. So you basically have completely free reign. You can make a huge area to do the VR in. And I think it's gonna be really fun. So I'm on my way to pizza and VR night. Life is hectic right now and I love it. Mama said there'll be days like this. There'll be days like this. My mama said. Hello, it's Wednesday. Last night was super fun. We ended up having a kind of like games night on a rooftop, which was just like the most incredible thing. I have so many moments where I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe this is my life. And like, that was kind of one of them. I know it sounds so silly, but I just feel so lucky to be here and so lucky to have met such nice people here. I really feel like because a lot of people moved to New York City, alone. As soon as I got here, people were very like, wanted to take me under their wing and introduce me to their friends. And so as a result, I've met so many incredible and very lovely people. Yeah, so I just feel very lucky. I had class this morning. I just got back. Um, this one, well, it's not really a class so much as more like a workshop where there's like 10 writers all in a room and each week we're there for like three hours and we just like workshop some ideas. Um, read some writing that we've done to each other and give feedback and stuff like that. So it's a lot more um, it was a lot less structured and a lot less formal than like my other classes are. So I had that this morning, that's all done, and that was my last kind of class of the week. So I'm gonna wrap this video up here. Thanks so much for watching. I'm gonna spend the next few days working on my novel and um, finishing my outline for a script I need to submit tomorrow. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. A massive shout out to Valentino for sponsoring this video. I what is life? That is so insane. Thank you for making this a possibility for me. It means the world. Um, I'm so grateful. All the best. Stay in touch. Have a wonderful day and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye! <laughs>